To put it simply, our experience of the world always contains how we feel about it subjectively and what it looks like objectively. But in the past, philosophers have argued that these two ways of looking at the world cannot coexist, so they have tried to explain it by using only one. Now, imagine a big square with four sections. This square can categorize the different answers to questions in philosophy. And guess what? The different kinds of personalities people have also fit into these sections. So, there is a connection between the sections that people fall into and the different answers to philosophical questions. Each section of the square represents a different way of looking at the world. We already mentioned the subjective worldview, which focuses on internal feelings, and the objective one, which focuses on external facts. There's also a worldview which believes there's something real beyond feelings and facts. And finally, there's a super worldview, which tries to explain the world by combining feelings and facts. But this perspective is a bit confusing, because feelings and facts seem to be opposites. There are other ideas that try to unite opposites, and we call them paradoxes. Philosophers have realised that paradoxes cannot be true, but they also cannot be false. They're something else. In fact, the very idea of truth can be represented by the square of four sections, and this means that it's logically possible that all of the sections might be true. Now, this square we've been talking about also represents our experience of ourselves. Our subjective feelings are related to our mind, while objective facts are related to our body. And just like the paradoxical super worldview tries to combine feelings and facts, the interaction of the mind and brain creates something very special, self-consciousness, an endless loop where we are conscious of being conscious of being conscious. But hold on to your hats, because it's about to get mind-blowing. The reason that the super worldview is super confusing is that all the things contained in it are things that refer to themselves, just like self-consciousness. So, basically, the whole structure contains itself, like a fractal. It's a pattern that repeats itself over and over, both on a smaller scale within the super section and on a larger scale outside of it. But wait, there's more. Since the super worldview unites the subjective and the objective, it also unites the two different ways that we can prove ideas, logic and science. That is, we discover our consciousness through experience, that's the science part. But there's also no experience without consciousness, that's the logic part. The super worldview is the only thing we know through both, so it's the only thing we can know for sure. But since the super contains the entire square, it also proves that the entire square is true. How crazy is that? In fact, this structure is just showing the ways that conscious experience evolves. Every section represents a part of reality, and different answers to philosophical questions are true in different ways. The mental world and the physical world are like mirror images, and as we evolve, the mirrors move further and further apart. Self-consciousness is paradoxical, and since we cannot experience a paradox directly, to understand ourselves we must be chopped into two different halves the mental and the physical, feelings and facts. So, ultimately, we're all a part of one big self, and all the feelings and facts we experience are like reflections of how much we understand ourselves. The entire world is a mirror that shows us how we think, and the world evolves because we're continuously learning about who we really are.